And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Go, 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 go. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Just Ask Joey. I'm your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where a former idiot answers your questions to help you either avoid idiocy or get over your idiocy. And speaking of idiocy, I just recorded this entire podcast and vlog and didn't have the freaking microphone plugged in. So this technically is an entire retake of the first one. So really happy about that right now. I'm thrilled. It's also like 98 degrees here in uh, Silicon Valley. So enjoying that too. Uh, So today's question is one of those fun questions that I love answering. Like I love being able to do the helpful questions. I love, you know, people asking questions about health and about running and, and relationships and all that stuff. All that stuff. That's why I do this is for that stuff. But it's fun every once in a while to get something a little bit different. And today... I get a sports question and it's a big question because it's uh, a huge NBA star is a free agent this year and gets to choose where he's going to go. Is he going to stay? Is he going to leave? Now this is, uh, it's not LeBron sized, but it's just under LeBron size. So the question of the day is where should Kevin Durant go? Kevin Durant, for those of you that are not sports fans, and that are still listening, for whatever reason you're still listening, Kevin Durant is on the Oklahoma City Thunder. He is top five players in NBA the last, I don't know, eight, nine years. And uh, he's a free agent. He's on a good team, but pretty much every team in the NBA wants him, and he has a serious decision to make starting on Friday when um, free agency opens. Uh, He has meetings set up. He has denied meetings to some teams. He's said yes to some other meetings, and... I'm going to go through the list, uh, discuss the teams I think he should go to. Kevin Durant's biggest decision that he has to make right now all comes down to one thing. It comes down to legacy. What is Kevin Durant's legacy going to be in the history books of the NBA and American sports when he's done playing? Legacy comes down to winning. And it comes down to what city you're in and what team you play for. So he needs to think about winning, he needs to think about the team, and he needs to think about the city. So what is is the situation that's going to allow him to win in the best city on the best team? And best, this is historically speaking, this is not best right now, because right now the Thunder are number three in the NBA right now. I mean, they looked amazing in the playoffs. And they just, if it wasn't for, you know, game six and seven, just kind of taking a dump, I don't know what they did. They would have been in the finals, and and at least you know, they would have given uh, the Cavs a run for the money, if not one at all. So he's already on a fantastic team, but there are aspects of it that I think he could, you know, do better uh, other places. So Kevin Durant, legacy decision. This is this is it. This is like this is the legacy thing is what brought LeBron back to Cavaliers because he wanted his legacy to be, I won for my hometown. So this is KD has already said. It's not a LeBron thing, so he's not going to the Wizards. He's not taking a meeting with the Wizards. Um, This is something different. This is, but this is his legacy here. And he wants to win, obviously. He wants to go down in history as one of the best basketball players ever. And being on certain teams helps that. The teams that come to mind at first, the Knicks and the Lakers. And guess who's not getting meetings? The Knicks and the Lakers. If I was a Lakers and Knicks fan, I would be pissed right now not pissed at Kevin Durant pissed at my team my team like the two places like you want your star to shine bright you go to LA and you go to New York but your team suck so bad that he's not even willing to sit down and listen to what you have to say like the Lakers kind of makes sense like their history Lakers history is you know amazing in the NBA but their team blows and their front office looks like they don't even talk to each other. So if they're not communicating stuff, you don't even know what you're getting yourself into. So Lakers are out. Luckily, the Clippers are still there. And in New York, KD has a chance to join the new big three. The problem is the other two people in that big three are Carmelo Anthony and Derrick Rose, two ball hogs. 
that's probably not going to go over too well. Two ball hogs that don't really play defense either in a team that has historically, you know, kind of blown. So the fact that he doesn't want to become part of that, you know, the new big three says a whole lot about the Knicks organization, but says even more about Mello and D Rose. So take that with, you know, however you're going to take it. So he needs to figure out his legacy. I'm going to go through the teams in ascending order of the teams that I think have the best shot to land Kevin Durant, the number one uh, free agent this year. Number six is the Miami Heat. Fantastic city. Strong history. Amazing GM. Strong head coach. What's not to like? It'd be a fantastic pick for any player to, to, to be in Miami. Kevin Durant doesn't really seem like a Miami t- kind of guy, but, you know, since I've never met him and we've never hung out or anything, I don't really know. I think we're going to learn a lot about Kevin Durant this uh, this offseason. He doesn't seem like a Miami guy. I don't see him, you know, chilling with Pitbull and stuff on a yacht, but, you know, who knows? We'll find out. Um, the problem with Miami, really the only problem with Miami, is uh, the bed's still warm from LeBron. You know, it's a little too close for home. And I think that him stepping into that role would diminish his his uh, his legacy. It would diminish his light because LeBron, like just like two seasons ago, like just left there, just broke Miami's heart. So for KD to come in and step in there, I don't think would help his legacy at all. And and Miami, you know, Miami's been a solid team, you know, the last 10, 15 years, whatever. But they're not like one of those blue blood historic teams. So there's 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 that. You know, he would. He would be a contender, you know. Obviously, whatever team, if he goes to any team in the East, they automatically become the number two behind the Cavs, automatically. So that's one big plus about the East over the West is you're automatically number two. You're pretty much automatically going to be uh, in the Eastern Conference Finals every single year against LeBron, and that's a that's that's a pretty big deal, you know. Getting that far and being that successful, like to that level every year. That's kind of what you're looking for. You want you want either the finals or the the you know the NBA finals, and he he's going to get that no matter where he goes on on the East, just because he's going to go to a decent team. He's not going to go to the you know the Knicks, um, but you know the sheets still smell like LeBron in Miami, and I think that's a huge deterrent for him. So, as they say in Shark Tank, for that reason, I am out. The number five team that I think has a shot to land him is the Clippers. For two reasons. One, it's LA and you you want to get exposure and you want your light to shine really bright. LA is probably the place to do it. I mean, he would be a hero on the West Coast like that. Um, on top of that, you get to come in and play with CP3, the best point guard, you know, possibly in the NBA right now. That's a pretty big plus for somebody who who has a great shot like, like KD does. Problem with the Clippers, uh, you know, you lose Blake Griffin, who... You know, he's he's solid player, not, you know, not the greatest decision maker in the playoffs, um, likes little tiny, you know, Kia cars, which seems weird because he's a giant, um, but he's gone. He's going someplace, New York, maybe, um, you know, you got DeAndre Jordan, you have JJ Redick, you have a, you have a decent team, but keep in mind, you're leaving a team that has a killer head coach that has a great GM that has a ton of support in the Midwest, um, and they're going to be up there too. And you can't leave your team and go to a team where you're not sure you're going to beat them. You know, not only do you have to beat your old team, but you're going to still have to deal with the Spurs, who are an amazing organization, and you have to deal with the Warriors, who are, you know, on point the last the last few years. And I, I don't see them, you know, being an easy out for the next, you know, six seven years. So. You can't go backwards. So his his light would be brighter because he's in L.A., but I don't think you're going to be winning as much if you go to the Clippers. So for that reason, I am out on the Clippers. Um, number four, the San Antonio Spurs. They are pretty much... Their issue that they have is going to be the same issue that the Oklahoma City Thunder have. Fantastic team. Great organization. I mean, obviously, Pop is one of like the, the all-time greatest coaches in NBA history. Um, you know, they're getting a little they're getting a little older, but those older guys are going to retire, and and you know, because they're such a strong organization, they're going to bring in new amazing players um, to to around them, anyways. But when we're talking legacy, when we're talking, you know, forever talk, San Antonio is a small town, 
and small towns are, you know, kind of glanced over. I mean, you have Tim Duncan. How many rings does Tim Duncan have? Five? Six? I don't know. I should have looked that up before I started this. So you have Tim Duncan, one of, one of the, the winningest all-stars in NBA history, and people don't really ever talk about him. People are always talking about Kobe. People are always talking about East Coast, West Coast. People are always talking about Bulls. People are always talking about major cities, you know, People always talk about Miami, L.A., Boston, New York, and San Antonio gets overlooked. Amazing team. If, if he just wants rings, that's a really good pick. That's a really good choice to go to, Spurs. You're still in a very, uh, very compacted West. You're still going to have a lot of fight just to get through the playoffs, let alone into the finals. Um, but you don't get much better, a better run organization than the Spurs, but... Because they're a small town, because they're in little teeny tiny San Antonio, and I'm sorry, Texans, you have one of the best franchises in, in NBA history the last 20 years, and you're in a tiny town, and the East Coast and West Coast bias just kind of, you know, you kind of get lost in it. So for that reason, for the legacy reason, because he would just kind of be trading places with where he is right now, Spurs are out. Um, Golden State Warriors, number three. This is my team. These are my guys. Uh, and I don't want them on the team. I know that sounds crazy. Why the hell would you not want one of the best players in NBA uh, the last 10, 15 years to be on your team? Because I think it would mess up the dynamic. I think we have a golden boy in Steph Curry. He's a clear number one. He is the most popular player in franchise history. He's one of the most popular players in, in the NBA right now. And KD coming in... Is he number one? Is he number two? I mean, Katie's fantastic. Katie's been fantastic for years. Does that mean he comes in as a number one? Is he number two? I think that kind of muddies the water. I mean, keep in mind, Steph Curry's uh, light is so bright right now that it covers up the fact that there are other players on the team that have just as much importance in their success as Steph Curry does, but people don't ever talk about him. Is KD going to be okay? What if he gets lost in that? Who takes the last shot? Who takes the second to last shot? Who's running the floor? Those kind of things get confused when you have two number ones. It's kind of the it's kind of the issue that he's having with Westbrook. Um, there's a there's a mix. I think I think the teams that are really successful have clearly defined roles, and I don't know how in the world you would clearly define the roles of Steph and um, KD when it comes to offense, defense. Obviously, you know Durant's going to get the rebounds and stuff that that Curry can't even reach, but how do you define those roles on offense when it comes down? Like if, if KD and, and, and uh, Curry were in the, the last couple minutes with the Cavs in the finals, who takes that last shot? I think, I think stuff like, it's stuff like that that would, that would, that would not only mess with their, the dynamic of the team, but because it's Steph's team, that would also uh, hinder his legacy in the long run because he's coming into like someone else's light. And I don't think that that will work for him. Even though he'll he'd be winning, I think he can win other places. Number two on my list is this is the Oklahoma City Thunder. And just like I said with the Spurs, the only problem with the with the Oklahoma City Thunder is it's in Oklahoma City. It's tiny. It's a it's a little you know. And I know it's not tiny for for you know the middle America. You know, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but you get glanced over. And he's his light is about as bright as it can get there. And he, if you're thinking long term. You know, you're, you're thinking of, you, you, he has to be thinking big city. Now, winning wise, I don't know if there's a better place to win than in Oklahoma. You know, you kind of already have your clearly defined roles. You have a ridiculous coach. You have a ridiculous GM. I mean, they're a amazing team. And they showed that they can handle the Spurs. And they really probably should have handled the Warriors too. So they, they could have just as easily been in the finals uh, with the Cavs instead of the Warriors. And to leave that team, you'd only leave them. There's only one team that I could think of that you would leave. And this is all for legacy. You know, you'll be, you'll be able to win because he's going to be in the East. And the East sucks. So he's got automatically whatever team he goes to is going to be number two. Unless he went to the Cavs and they'd be number one. But come on, that's not going to happen. Um, so he's automatically going to be number two. And he doesn't have to deal with all the congested West, Golden State Warriors, Clippers thing, and, and or the Clippers thing. He doesn't have to deal with the small town thing in Oklahoma City. The only team that I think could pull Kevin Durant from the Thunder 
And if I were Kevin Durant, this is where I would go. If I'm thinking long term, if I'm thinking forever, if I'm thinking the long game, where do I go? I leave Oklahoma City and I go to Boston and I become a Celtic. Why? Great GM. Great coach. The East sucks, so you'd automatically be number two. Ton of cap space. And people are going to want to be in Boston with you once you go there. And they are one of the most storied franchises in not only NBA history, but in sports history. The Boston Celtics. Amazing fan base. You get the East Coast bias. You would run, you and LeBron would run the Eastern Conference for the next four to six to seven years. Would run it. I don't care what the Knicks do. The Knicks will probably, this is my guess too, the Knicks will probably go out and get like Dwight Howard. And then you have three guys that can't win playing together. So you guys can get mad at me about that too. Um, He would be number two automatically. He would be fighting LeBron for that finals berth every single year. And there's just everything to me would be a good fit for Boston. You know KD loves basketball. You know he's a historian of the game. He knows the history of Boston. He knows what his legacy would be being a Boston Celtic, bringing Boston Celtics a ring. I mean, it would be, Paul Pierce is going to be pissed if, if, KD, if KD goes to Boston and he's out there in LA. Um, but that's the team I think he should go to. I think KD should be a Boston Celtic, and I think he should dominate the East with LeBron. And I think they should drive the Knicks fans insane because you're going to have this quote unquote dream team in uh, in New York. And that rivalry is going to be insane. The rivalry in uh, with Cleveland is going to be insane. He'll have turned down Miami. That rivalry will step up. I mean, he will, his spotlight, as big as his light is now, you put him on the East Coast with ESPN and the East Coast, you know, whether you believe it or not, the East Coast bias and his light is going to explode. So KD, my pick is KD to the Boston Celtics. Break a lot of hearts, um, but not mine because I don't want them on the Warriors. So if you guys have any, you guys want to discuss this more, I would love to. I love talking sports. Um, if you guys have any other questions, hit me up on Snapchat. Hit me up on Twitter. Um, I love talking uh, nutrition, health, relationships, self-awareness, love talking sports, politics, that kind of stuff. But um, the place where I really think I can help the most is talking with relationships and talking with self-awareness, talking with how to turn things around, how to um, get out of trouble, how to get out of bad situations. Those are the kind of things that I've all like really had to deal with and have really um, learned a ton through my stuff. And I would love to be able to take some of the stuff that I've learned and apply it to you, to your situation personally not just a big broad brush to, to kind of um, paint over, but but how can I help you specifically with your specific problem? So if there's something you'd like to ask me, Snapchat, Twitter. Hope you guys have a fantastic Wednesday, and I will see you Friday morning. And she was like, huh? and he was like, nah. and we was like, what? Black and gold.